We have already talked about a very important characteristic reaction of carbaryl compounds called aldol condensation reaction, right? And in this reaction, aldehydes or ketones containing an alpha hydrogen atom is treated with a dilute base like dilute sodium hydroxide to form an aldol. On heating this aldol, elimination of a water molecule takes place, giving us an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde or a ketone as a final product. Now, what do you think is the most important element in this reaction? Yes, the presence of an alpha hydrogen atom. If we did not have an alpha hydrogen, then we cannot form the reactive species which is an enolate ion, right? But what if we started with a reactant which did not have an alpha hydrogen? Obviously, aldol condensation would not take place. But instead, if we tweak the reaction conditions a little bit, we would end up with a very interesting reaction. For example, if we had a non-enolyzable aldehyde like a formaldehyde or a benzaldehyde, a non-enolyzable aldehyde is the one that does not have an alpha hydrogen. So here we have formaldehyde and benzaldehyde. And if we heated these aldehydes in strongly basic conditions, not dilute condition that we employed here, but in strong basic conditions, then we would end up with a disproportionation reaction. Basically, this particular reactant would disproportionate to give us an oxidized as well as a reduced product. Isn't that what a typical disproportionation reaction is? Where a starting reactant would get oxidized as well as reduced? Yes, but this specific disproportionation reaction is called the Canizaro reaction. In a Canizaro reaction, we take a non-enolyzable aldehyde and heat it under strongly basic conditions to give us the oxidized as well as the reduced product. Now the oxidized product of an aldehyde is acid and the reduced product of an aldehyde is an alcohol, right? So let's see what products we get in these cases. So we have two molecules of formaldehyde and when we heat them in the presence of strong base like concentrated potassium hydroxide, we get the oxidized product which is potassium formate and the reduced product which is methanol. Similarly, benzaldehyde also undergoes Canizaro reaction to give us potassium benzoate and benzyl alcohol as the products. Now let's take a moment and actually understand what is happening here. I mean we have an aldehyde and in the same reaction we are getting an oxidized as well as a reduced product. Now you might remember from conversion reactions that we usually have to employ very specific reagents to get these products, right? I mean for oxidation of aldehydes to carboxylic acid, we use an entirely different set of reagents, oxidizing agents like chromic acid, potassium permanganate and so on. And to get the reduced product, we usually have to employ reducing agents like lithium aluminium hydride, sodium borohydride and so on. But look at this here, in the same reaction we are getting both an oxidized as well as a reduced product. So this definitely warrants a deep dive into the mechanism, right? I mean, we have to know what exactly is going on here. So it's now time to zoom into the mechanism. Now you see, the entire reaction happens in strongly basic conditions. That means we have a surplus of hydroxide ions roaming around or floating around in the solution. And the hydroxide ion is nucleophilic or it is electron rich and it is actively looking for an electrophilic site. You know, hydroxide ion just wants to give away these electrons and just sit and relax, take a back seat. So in doing so, it actually attacks the electrophilic carbon atom and for that our aldehyde is absolutely great. We have a great substrate here because carbon atom here is electrophilic, it is electron deficient. And this attack results in the formation of a tetrahedral intermediate as you can see here. Now in the next step, another hydroxide ion comes and grabs this hydrogen from the OH group. So basically we end up with a dianion. Now remember, this formation of the dianion takes place when we have a highly concentrated basic medium. In the next step, the C double bond O gets restored. Now if the C double bond O gets restored here, something has to leave from here, right? Because carbon would otherwise end up having 5 bonds which is not possible. And therefore to maintain its tetravalency, as soon as the C double bond O is restored, a hydride transfer takes place. A hydride transfer from this dianion to another formaldehyde molecule. And this hydride transfer is the most crucial step in the entire reaction mechanism. The molecule that loses the hydride ion is the one that gets oxidized and the molecule that accepts the hydride ion is the one that gets reduced. 
So you can see how from two identical aldehyde molecules we have ended up with an oxidized as well as a reduced product. Now on acidic workup or protonation we get the final products which are an acid and the alcohol. Now remember I said that the dianion is formed when we have a highly concentrated basic medium? Right. But there is also an alternative mechanism that takes place when we carry out the reaction in not so concentrated medium. According to that mechanism, the hydride transfer takes place directly from this tetrahedral intermediate. So basically we don't wait for a dianion to be formed but the C double bond gets restored here and this hydride ion gets transferred. And of course the rest of the mechanism is same and we end up with formic acid and methanol. So now that we have done enough of discussions on the mechanism of the reaction, Let's look at a problem. So the question that we have here is, instead of using two molecules of the same aldehyde, what if we now had two different aldehydes, both of which of course do not have the alpha hydrogen atoms. Like let's say one is formaldehyde and the other is benzaldehyde. So what do you think happens here? So do we get like four different products here? You know formic acid and methanol from formaldehyde and benzoic acid and benzyl alcohol from benzaldehyde? that is the oxidized and reduced products from each of these aldehydes? Not really because you see Canizaru reaction is highly selective and we would still end up with just two products an oxidized as well as a reduced product. But the question is which among them would get oxidized and which among them would get reduced? And all of that boils down to the reactivity of aldehydes. From the reaction mechanism we just saw that the first step in a Canizaro reaction is the attack of the hydroxide ion, right? And the hydroxide ion would attack that aldehyde which is more reactive. And in this case, compared to benzaldehyde, formaldehyde is a lot more reactive. The carbonyl carbon here is more electrophilic than the carbonyl carbon in benzaldehyde and it also doesn't have to worry much regarding the steric hindrance, correct? So that means the nucleophilic hydroxide ion would attack the formaldehyde and the hydride transfer occurs on the benzaldehyde. So if we look at the mechanism of this specific reaction, we will see the nucleophilic OH- attack in the formaldehyde and hydride transfer taking place on the benzaldehyde eventually giving us formic acid and benzyl alcohol. So the oxidized product comes from formaldehyde and the reduced product comes from benzaldehyde. So this type of a Canizaro reaction where we use two different non enolizable aldehydes is called cross Canizaro reaction. The product of such a reaction would depend on the reactivity of the aldehydes. The more reactive aldehyde would get oxidized giving us corresponding acid and the less reactive aldehyde would give us the corresponding alcohol. So the final products here would be formic acid and benzyl alcohol.